So today I decided I'm gonna make a tutorial video on how I made this effect happen in my latest music video I worked on. So this all goes down in After Effects. We're gonna be dealing with some roto brushing, so we're gonna make sure that our composition settings are the same as our footage. We want the frame rate to be exactly the same. So once you found out exactly where you want your, this to happen in your footage, we can go ahead and cut that specifically, cut that part. So for my footage specifically, I'm going to start rotoing about this area. So I'm going to actually duplicate this footage and cut this right here. So we're going to have this as our, this bottom layer as our background. I'm going to change this to like a yellow color so we can really differentiate. And this top as our actual roto layer. So let's find out exactly where we're going to stop rotoing. I'm going to say right here. So now that we have this, I'm actually just going to pre-comp it just to make things a little bit easier, just like this. And now we're ready to roto. So we go ahead and grab our roto brushing tool and double click the actual layer that you're gonna roto brush and we can start here now. So basically what roto brushing is, is you're going to be painting what you wanna keep in the frame. And another important thing I forgot to mention is that you're supposed to be in full quality while doing this, or else you won't be able to see exactly what you're working with. So uh, on the first try, we got a pretty good rotor here, but usually this doesn't always come out perfect. Like ex for example, right here, we're gonna go ahead and hit control, or actually, sorry, alt, to change this to the negative mode and cut out what we don't want. We can switch back to this to get what we do want and go back and forth to get exactly what we need. And if we hold control, we can make things bigger and smaller by moving our mouse, holding control and moving our mouse. Now, if we wanted to get really insane with detail, we can go ahead and hold click over here and switch to the refine edge tool. And as we can see right here, we have some beard hairs that are kind of in and out and that'd be really hard to get specifically with the roto. So we go ahead and grab the refine edge tool and blend all over here and it should go ahead and get these for us so that now if I go over here it's a pretty good roto of what we need all right so now that we have this first frame already rotoed we can go ahead and move on to the next frame and see how it plays okay so we already have a few problems here that we can easily fix by using the roto brush tool the negative tool of course to fix up all the uh, things that we don't want in the frame. All right, so now that we have our subject completely rotated out, we can mess with the background now. So now we're gonna only work on the background for now and start setting our keyframes. Uh, if I'm only working on a certain section of a video, I like to isolate it just like this. This makes things easier for me later on. Okay, so to pull this off, we're going to be using an effect called Motion Tile. And what Motion Tile does is whenever the frame is ever moved, it actually extends the frame by however much you want. So as you can see, there's more frame outside of the frame, if that makes sense. But mainly we're going to be working with the output width here. We can go ahead and set that to about 700, I think should be enough. All right, since we're only gonna be working in the Y position, we only need to worry about this number right here. So the way this works is we're actually gonna go backwards first. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to use up as much as we can in the Y position. So to start off this, we're actually gonna to have to go backwards. And you can do this a lot quicker by actually zooming all the way out clicking on the frame and holding shift and it should lock to the Y position and you can just move this a bunch out. All right, so right here, we're gonna actually line this up as much as we can. Oh, you see it's a split frame, so we're actually gonna have to go a bit farther to the left and try and line this up perfectly. So now when this plays, you can't even tell that it's always, or it's all the way on a different frame. All right, so to pull off this effect a little bit easier and more precise, we can actually use math to move the frame. And don't worry, it's actually very simple math, so you don't have to do anything too complicated. All you have to do is move to the point where you want your next keyframe. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on our text again. 
click add 1920. And then after that, there's a little bit more. We're gonna multiply it by exactly how many frames we want to go. So for this span of time, I would say about three frames is good. And then we're gonna to move towards the end, set a new keyframe and do the exact same thing. Click on the end of the text if I can, there we go. And then click add 1920. And then we're actually just gonna only add 1920 here. I'm actually going to move this a bit here. So it's not very smooth just yet. What we're going to do now is we're going to highlight these keyframes and hit F9. And it's going to ease, ease these keyframes. Now, naturally, it's going to be smooth, but not exactly how we want it. So we're going to hit this graph editor while our keyframes are highlighted. And it takes us here. Now we want to select our first keyframe and hit this fit to selection right here. And we're going to widen this a little bit because it's not exactly what we see. So we're going to have to make a perfect kind of S curve here, which is pretty easy. We're going to grab these handles and morph the graph to what we'd like. And this is the kind of shape that you want to go for. So that we ease into this movement in the first bit. It goes really fast. And then it eases back into the other frame, just like that. So here we go. This is the exact shape that you kind of want. We're on to our final step, and that's adding the blur. Now, the blur is a lot easier than you would think. All you have to do is go ahead and grab this and look for directional blur and add that effect like that. Once you have your effect added, we're going to set this to 90 degrees because our blur is going to be sideways because we're moving on the, along the X. And now you can see this is the blur that we're going to be adding. All right, so we're going to already set a keyframe right here. And we're going to line up the keyframes with the other keyframes that we've already set. So we're going to line this up and then to crank up that blur length, this should be enough. And then over here, we're going to do this and set it back to zero. And we can hit U to see these keyframes real quick, highlight them, and we're going to easy ease these as well. So F9 and pull up into the graph editor. Now these keyframes are a little bit different, but don't worry. We're going to go ahead and smooth these out like this, point this downward, and then also do this just like this and smooth it out on the exit. This one should ramp up a little bit more. So let's move this outward. Now it's blurred while it's moving and then back to normal. Boom. And that should be it. You can go ahead and unhide this layer and that should be the effect. Don't forget to check out the music video and give it a like. Don't forget to give this video a like. And also I'm going to be streaming on Twitch soon. So go ahead and go down in the description, follow my Twitch. I might be doing editing there or just random games that I like to play. Either way, go ahead down there and try and catch one of my lives. And if you want to see more tutorials or more content on here, go ahead and subscribe. I will be posting a lot more pretty soon. So look forward to that. Anyways, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. Adios.